Okay, so this is an ordinary M12 Milwaukee battery. Uh, the nice thing about this is this is a compact, portable, 12-volt power source. Uh, and the other nice thing is that we kind of just recently played with is you can take a standard uh, mini fuse here, stick it right in there, and bam, you got a spot for your alligator clamps. That's extremely easy to do and safe. I mean, if you really want, you could put like a one-amp fuse in there. So if you're testing something sensitive that you don't want to take the risk of overcurrent, you can do that. Um, if you look closely, these actually have markings. So you can see if you look really closely, there is a positive and a negative mark on these terminals. And we found that these mini fuses just slot right in. And now we have perfect little terminals right there for our jumper cables. So let's come over to the car. We did a startup of this car the other day, and you may have uh, seen the video, and we noticed that we only had one gear, which initially we thought that we had a wiring fault. Um, or even a mechanical fault in the transmission, but it turns out I think it is just a case of the solenoids being stuck And I'm going to show you how we've currently come to that theory anyway So you want to disconnect your ground, okay, if we're not it's, it's going to be easier to isolate this you can leave the ground and you can run power off your battery But since we're going to go over to the shelf and test a different transmission It's a lot easier for us to use this portable battery here, so I've just disconnected the ground that way we're not testing with this anti-gravity battery here versus the Milwaukee and getting different results due to that, I want a fair as test as possible because we're going to compare the noise level between the two. So we'll grab our negative. Uh, it's always great to have some alligator clips. These are kind of some heavy duty units. Just got those off the Amazon website. Let's take a look in here. So if you looked closely, again, that says C3 positive. So that's the positive. And if you looked in here, that says C1 negative minus. So, and these would probably work in either polarity. But again, just keep things as fair as possible. You know, let's know exactly what's going on. So we'll take our ground, our negative, And we need to find some bare metal on the transmission here. This seems to work well enough. We got some paint scratched off our shift selector there, manual valve selector. And we're going to hook our positive to there. And just watch if you're not using insulated ends that you don't have that on something that's going to throw a spark, blow your fuse. Positive. And now we'll go ahead and go to what should be our solenoid A and B, the orange and yellow here, which controls shifting. Listen real closely. A tiny little click. Some of that click is actually the spark from completing the circuit inside my connector here. Your tiny little click. Um, this is a Deutsch connector, but from the factory, this has a different four pin connector, which we're going to show you in a second, which is just as easy to work with. So now that we kind of remember what that sounds like, let's go over to a parts unit we have here. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and find a good ground point here, and we're going to see the factory 4-pin shift solenoid connector. Um, there's another 4-pin connector here that handles the temp some of the rotation speed sensors here for the stock transmission control unit, but we want the one that goes straight into the oil pan here. So we have our, once again, our solenoids A and B here. I may have the order of those reversed, but it's orange and yellow. So listen to this. You can hear that plunger moving and bottoming out inside the solenoid very clearly. And that's what, that's what my transmission used to sound like. Um, and it doesn't anymore. And we did a full overhaul on that. So my best guess is we used some solvents inside that solenoid to either dislodge some material and actually got the solenoid stuck. Or it's got corroded in there from getting cleaned and sitting or some other number of things. It's not electrically shorted, um, but I just don't hear it moving like I think it should. And no matter what signals we send to the solenoids while the car's running, it's always in third gear, which is usually suggestive that you have a solenoid problem. But considering we've tried two different solenoids, two sets, 
I thought it was something mechanical, but this other solenoid set is also really quiet too. So it could be a case where you're working with used parts. Just because you switch to a new used part doesn't mean it's good. Uh, so we got to test them all. Uh, we don't periodically rebuild these autos, so I've, I haven't really done this noise check on the solenoids as part of our process, but that is something we're going to be doing now. So later on, we'll pull those solenoids out. We will look them over, make sure they look okay, measure their resistance. Um, it's in the factory specs. I can't remember. It's something like 3 ohms. They should be not dead short or dead open. And we're going to put those in this car. We're going to have to drop the oil pan, remove the filter, remove the valve body, put those in. So it's a little bit of a process. But I'm really hopeful that given the noise those are making, that the car is going to shift then. And that could help us you know, not have to remove the transmission again and tear it down and look for an internal problem. Uh, we completely rebuilt that transmission after our torque converter failure with new clutches, new seals, uh, a few new bearings and bushings, um, new drum. It's got all the billet goodness, JB Designs, billet drum, Kegley 6 uh, disc billet front hub. A 300 output shaft, Liberty transfer gears, it's got really pretty much everything you can do to one of these autos at this time. Um, so it should be a really solid unit. We set all the end play to fa factory spec and we also set all the clutch end plays to exactly what they're supposed to be too. So I was surprised to have an issue, but this just goes to show that testing, testing, testing. We would never let anything leave this shop without knowing it fully functioned. And even if it's my own car, it's just a case of that too. We had this running up on the lift, didn't shift have to find the problem uh, and important thing is you know just be scientific about it um, don't give up and again the lesson that I've learned a million times is just because one used part doesn't work doesn't mean the next used part is going to work either or the third or the fourth or whatever you need to confirm that the parts you're trying to use do still work um, you can get new solenoid packs but I'm a little bit skeptical I'm using ones that are made by the aftermarket at this time. I'd rather use the OEM Mitsubishi ones if possible because I know how they react and everything like that. Uh, so I'm going to check, check these out. And if these all test okay, um, we're going to use those. And I'd like to take these apart at some time and see what's actually wrong with them. I don't know that they're like serviceable to where you can put them back together, but I'd really just like to see what is going on. It really sounds to me somehow corrosion got in there, which doesn't make sense because we did not clean them with any water-based solvents. Uh, but we did use mineral spirits and some things like that and then afterwards you know put ATF back in them so maybe the mineral spirits have swollen a seal or something inside that solenoid body I don't know I want to know though and see what we need to avoid in the future because it's a good idea to clean these solenoids out they accumulate a lot of dirt um, we have been on my transmission cleaning them and then blowing them out with air and then putting ATF back in them so I'm not sure what's wrong in that process or perhaps you know it's just a case of luck and bad parts uh, these transmissions, you know, like all of them are about 30 years old, and so a 30 year old electrical component may not be good. And so we're hoping we can get revenge back on this car because we got more of them to work on, and that one's taking up space. Revenge Performance is the place to get the parts and the advice to help right the wrongs on your vehicle. We partner with the industry leaders in parts distribution and warehousing to get you the best possible prices, the widest selection of parts, and the fastest shipping. With our real-time inventory on our website, if we say we have it in stock, it's ready to ship. From us or from our many national distribution partners. With hundreds of thousands of parts available, I guarantee we can get revenge on your ride.